I want to show you a quick demo using the intense blocks in a variety of different ways. Okay, the big difference you'll find between the intense blocks and the intense pencils, of course, is that you can cover a lot bigger area a lot quicker. Using the side of the block, you get the whole surface here to lay down on the paper. Before you do so, you need to rub gently on a, a spare spit of scrap paper just to get the side smooth. It's just part of the natural formation of the blocks that sometimes they're a little undulating towards the end, so you just need to rub them and get them nice and smooth. It's as easy as this. Look at all that colour laid down. Nice and quick. You need, you'll find as you use them, you don't need as much colour as you think you do. That will turn very vibrant when I add water onto there. So I'm just going to show you, we'll add a few more colours on. Make a little bit more of a scene out of it, using the sides of the blocks. Put a couple of mountains in here maybe. And in the background. Just literally very nice and quick and soft movements. I think bits of shadow here and there. We don't need to cover the whole of the image because once we add water, as you'll see, the colour absolutely explodes, so we don't want to go too mad. I'll just add a little bit of red there. And there, okay. This is obviously a very quick demo, but we're going to go for a bit of colour. So, you need to make sure you've got plenty of water because as it dries the colour sets exactly where it is so we need to make sure we've got nice and wet see the brightness of the green coming out immediately there's a nice quick and easy covering of quite a large area which would take you quite a while with the pencils themselves adding into the mountains really really quick and easy we just what great fun basically you've got all that picture done roughly at a, to a rough stage in a matter of seconds really the great thing about the ink tense blocks is once this is all dry you can go over that without fear of changing what's already on the page whilst it's still wet you can actually add in some ink tense blocks directly onto the wet areas to get a bit of texture in there. So, for instance, we can, it takes the paper immediately on wet areas to get really nice textured areas. Add a bit of detail if you like. We can add a few trees along that bit there, but it's only only intense on the wet parts. So, if we want to make it really deep colours. Simply wet the paper where it is. There we go. Add some trees in and a bit of shadow. There we go. Okay. Another way of using the blocks is like a, a basic watercolour paint pan. You can just paint directly from the block. So we can just wet your brush, a big brush or a little brush, depending on what you want to do. If you want to put a little bit of detail in somewhere, maybe some birds flying in the sky. Just literally taking water on your brush, brushing into the block, and drawing your birds. Of course, the great thing about the blocks is you can do large areas with your brush as well. So you can take take the blocks, get your colour on there, and get a beautiful wide wash. Okay, the other thing you can do of course which is great fun is you can put two blocks together and it's always ideal if you can keep your wet blocks and your dry blocks separate. What I tend to do is keep a set of dry blocks and a set of wet blocks so that you don't end up getting them all mixed up and, and uh, d dirtying up all the dry ones. Put two blocks together, if you've got a wide enough brush you can take Cut off from them both at the same time. You can see how it merges itself together on the page. Right, using the grate and shake, I'm going to create a nice wash for the sky here. So I'll take one of the blocks, grate some into the colour below, which I've already done. Add a bit more dark blue to make it a bit more sky like. 
the lid back on and give it a quick shake about. There's our beautiful purple. I'm going to use that. To put a wash of colour over the sky in that area. Okay. See how quick and easy it is. You can just keep dipping into your pot from the grate and shake and adding more colour as and where you like. Right. Now whilst we've got this sky out, what we can do to add a bit more interest here, something I love doing, is take one of the blocks, for instance, maybe one of the darker blues, and whilst it's still wet. We'll take the block and a paintbrush and make the block quite wet and start splatting into the sky, get a bit of a texture going on in there. It doesn't matter if we get some big blobs because we can always take a kitchen roll to it, add some other colours in as well. It makes it quite mysterious and murky. You can use this any way you like, but it add a bit of water on top of that sometimes. It just goes to show how much you can do with the blocks. Hey, we're off. <laughs> and it's really good fun. As you can see, the mess I'm making. Right, a bit of a cloth. Maybe dab a bit of that out. A bit of a stormy sky appearing here. You can work into that for quite a while. And then maybe I want to put a little bit more detail into the city. I could take the white. Keep my hands a bit cleaner on the white. With the gripper. If I want to put, I can add a bit more sort of lights here and there on the city with the white, which, as you can see, does go over the top of darker colours quite well. And I've kept my hands clean. And the white clean, which is very important, of course, because once that gets a bit dirtier, then you could start getting into trouble. So there we go. One of the great qualities of ink tents is that you can layer up so you can get a base layer you can add on top of that and it won't affect the layer beneath which makes painting things with detail in it quite a bit easier so you don't have to go round little objects with your brush you just go over the top so we'll get a nice little orange color here mixing yellow and orange on our sort of tin lid palette so because ink tents is permanent once dry it's really easy to just go over the top of something you've already painted without having to faff about going in and out of the detail you've already put down and get yourself a little image. I'm going to add a bit of sky in here around the sun as well. Once the ink, you've got to make sure the ink tents pigment is completely washed out onto the paper so there are lumps or darker areas that aren't washed and once that has become dry that's when it becomes permanent. So I'm just going to let that overlap slightly around the sun. Brush that out. And now we've got round. Whilst it's all wet, you can keep brushing this. Once it's dry, even those marks there we've put down will be permanent. So whilst it's still like that, I'm just going to work into it. Maybe even make that sun a bit brighter. Around that edge, and add a bit of water on. There you go. Nice and easy. 